I want to welcome you to to hey. Oh, let me do this. Uh, give me one second. Okay, so um, today the focus is going to be on a uh, method of uh, maximum likelihood. Uh, the other time we actually uh started I called um method of uh, estimation, and um. I remember I walk you through the method of movement and we all see how the method of movement work. But today I'm going to welcome you to our, another method of estimation. And this is a very, very important. Okay, we call that method of maximum likelihood. Uh, I, I, before I'm actually going to go into this, uh, I think it's better I tell you uh, the significance of method of maximum likelihood uh, in real life or uh, practical situation. You know, uh, I'm going to use an example from number one, um, effects of government policy. Okay. Effect of government policy and two, vaccine effects. Now, I want to say this. If we want to test the policy of a government, or government want to test, uh, you know, uh, this policy, everything is going to start from number one. I'm going to write the procedure. If you want to go by statistical approach, number one, there's going to be a, a model modu specification. Now, the specification of the model will relate that government policy to a particular outcome of interest. Now, and that very specification of a model, it means there's going to be the parameter at, of interest and the observed data. The next thing is parameter estimation, OK? What, what, what do I want to estimate? We want to estimate the effect of government uh, policy. Okay, now that is where the maximum likelihood estimation is going to come here. Okay, now, and after estimating that effect of, uh, you know, the policy effect size, then the next thing we're gonna do is to test if that government effect policy is statistically significant. And that is the reason why what we're going to do next, and now, you know, chapter 10, the focus is going to be, uh, what we're going to do next is going to be on hypothesis testing. Okay? So what we've been doing all this why is, uh, you know, uh, our estimation of parameter. Okay? Now, and as for the vaccine uh, effect, if you want to talk about for vaccine effect, also going to go through all this. I remember what when um, Moderna and um, Pfizer, you know, they're trying to tell the world the efficacy of their vaccine. The efficacy, you know, we, we, there's a, we can estimate that vaccine efficacy. Okay. So, and, um, you know, when we specify the model, the, you know, depending on the area we want to look at it, okay, Maybe we want to we want to talk about we want to look at uh, what we call um, cohorts and uh, what you know um, um, there's this thing that we call case control study. Okay, now if we incorporate uh, vaccine effect uh, into that, then we can use the maximum likelihood to estimate uh, the parameter. And not only that, uh, in uh, spread of disease, I don't know whether you've heard about SIR compartmental model. The compartmental model, uh, if you have a uh, vaccine effect uh, incorporated, of course, the method of maximum likelihood is also going to be used. Now, I want to have already justify uh, the significance of this approach. Then I want to go into the mathematics of it, you know, mathematics around, around this. Now, we want to talk about, because the method is 
method of maximum likelihood, then we four of us going to start with likelihood. Because what the method of maximum likelihood is talking about is we want to figure out the values of a parameter that will maximize the likelihood. Okay, and that is the reason because the whole thing centered around likelihood. I need to follow first tell all us what is the meaning of likelihood. Okay, uh, in, in any given statistical model or a functional form, you know when I talk about functional form, any given probability distribution, okay, we're always going to have unknown parameter and observed data. Okay. We're always going to have a no parameter and observe data. Okay. The likelihood is the probability of observing data given the parameter. Does that make sense now? That's what we mean by likelihood. And uh, uh, what, what, what are we now saying in the actual sense? Of course, you remember um, when we were dealing with the Fisher Nema factorization. Uh, of course, uh, the Fisher and Neymar use the idea of a likelihood of a distribution, okay? And they factorize that into two and they were able to obtain sufficient statistics. We're also going to build on that idea of getting a likelihood function of a probability distribution. Of course, the likelihood function is more or less the product of the PDF or the product of the PMF, okay? And of course, why here is the observed data that I talk about. The theta here is a parameter that is unknown that needs to be estimated. Okay, so take a look at that. Now, what I'm trying to show you now is with random variable, if it is discrete, we're actually going to make use of a py given theta. And if it is continuous, it's actually going to be f of y given theta. Okay, looking for the likelihood function now, it's just going to be a joint, a PMF or PDF, uh, which is exactly what we're doing here. If you take a look at what we're doing here now, okay, is, uh, you know, uh, that very sign of a pi i star from 1 to n is for products. Does that make sense? Any question on this? This is a likelihood. This is a way to get a likelihood of, you know, for a given underlying probability distribution, whether discrete or continuous. Okay, now we're still working with the likelihood. I think I've already given you the information about the likelihood is the probability of observing your data given your parameter. That's what we call the likelihood. Now, if we want to use a method of maximum likelihood, then you need to be able, just like if you want to use uh, Fisher Nema factorization or you want to use Nema Skeffy factorization, the two factorization involve you, you, you having the knowledge of likelihood of the distribution. If you want to use the method of maximum likelihood, then you need to be able to understand the likelihood of probability distribution. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you now is let's say the underlying probability distribution is binomial, okay? If you have a y1, y2 up to yn, follow a binomial distribution with n equal to 10, and theta is a parameter under investigation, and I want to get the likelihood of that, okay? Like I said, this is the distribution itself. The likelihood is going to bring a pi. That very pi is a product, okay? which means the likelihood is multiplicative in nature, okay? The likelihood is multiplicative in nature, okay? Now, what I'm trying to tell you now, if I now, after doing that, of course, uh, you know, uh, if you take a look at uh, the term that we have here, we got like one, two, and three, the likelihood is gonna add on each of that, okay? Now, on this one ten combination, y is still going to be that product. Then when the likelihood work on an exponent, because you have, uh, what I mean is that you have uh, y1 multiplied by that until you get to that, okay? And if you take a look at the base, it's the same theta. I can actually have this, okay, until I get to this, if I want to rewrite that, it's going to be summation yi. So what am I telling the world? The likelihood of theta raised to power y is the same thing as 
the likelihood of that is still at least a power summation. Why? Okay. And um, the likelihood of if I have one minus 10, one minus theta raised to power 10 uh, minus y, of course, that 10 is going to be 10n and y is going to be that. Now, what I'm trying to tell you right now, uh, when you are working with a binomial distribution, this is a likelihood. Is there any question? Okay, that is a likelihood for binomial distribution. I want to go into another important distribution now. Okay, uh, and let me tell you this. Binomial distribution has only one parameter, theta, which is the probability that you're looking for. It may be uh, how many, what is the proportion of Americans that approve the job the president is doing, okay? Or what is the proportion of a citizen or, or patient that uh, actually benefit from medical intervention? Okay, now what of in a situation whereby uh, I want to go into another distribution, take a look at that y1 up to yn follow normal distribution, and we got two parameters, mu and sigma squared. Well, how are we going to get the likelihood for that? Okay, now uh, this is how we want to get the likelihood for that. Don't forget it's a joint. Of course, this is the distribution. There's always going to be a pi, which is a product, right? Okay, so when I do that in n time, uh, then this is the likelihood of a normal distribution anywhere in the world, okay? So that is the likelihood of a normal distribution. Is there anyone who doesn't understand that? I I'm actually going to advise that you should visit some important probability distribution. I did something deliberately in assignment six and seven, and I know why I did that. I repeated some questions. I want you to be able to get yourself familiar with those questions. Okay, now this is a likelihood of normal distribution. Okay, uh, we want to have a motivating example for MLE now. When I say MLE, I mean maximum likelihood estimation. Okay, now uh, let's have a practical uh, scenario, uh, you know, uh, explanation of this. Uh, maybe I got three balls, and um, you know, and the three balls, you know, the, uh, they know distinguished by color, red or white in a box. Okay, and the goal. What is my goal? My goal is to estimate theta. Okay, I told you whenever parameter estimation is involved, of course, we need to use a method of estimation. Okay, now we, we want to use the MLE now. Now, estimate theta the number of red balls. Okay, you know, uh, it's not only red balls that we have, but the characteristics of interest. It's actually red, numbers of red balls. Okay, now what is the experiment? We want to conduct the experiment. We're not, in the experiment, we're only going to take a sample. I told you the other time, if you want to figure out the true value of a parameter, you need to follow first, uh, you know, identify the population of interest. And you know what? You are not going to investigate uh, all the items in the population of interest because you are limited by budget. What we normally do is to take a sample, right? And when you take a sample, then you need an estimator, okay? Now we draw two balls without replacement because we could, we got two types of, uh, you know, uh, sampling. We could go by with replacement. We could go by without replacement. Now let Y1 be the why won't be the color of the height ball? Because I got two categories of ball. There's all there's gonna be this labeling of y equal to one if the ball is red, because I'm interested in red, okay? And there is zero when the ball is white, because I'm not interested in white. Okay. Now uh, in the outcome now, the outcome is actually gonna be, don't forget, I'm actually taking two, right? If I'm taking two, uh, okay, why won't y2 okay y1 y2 what does that mean maybe the first uh the first one turn red the second one also turn red and that's why you see uh one one okay now and i want to use the method of maximum likelihood now to figure out what the par uh, the estimate of the parameter is going to be because of the fact that we are working with um you know uh, if you take a look at uh the number of balls on distinguished by color. This is looking like a binomial or Bernoulli process. Okay, now in the solution, 
we need to be able to give each value of theta that give rise to the model. There's going to be so many possibility for the values of theta. Don't forget, we actually want to identify one that we maximize in likelihood at the end of the day. This is the method of maximum likelihood. If you want to do that, then you need to be able to tell the world the possible. You know, one one is a one of the possibility. But if I want to talk about the total sample space, okay, I'm actually going to have this guy here, take a look at that. You know, I'm choosing two balls. He said that first one is zero, second one is zero means the first one is not red, second one is not red. I'm interested in red. And look at that, those are the possibility. That's what we call the sample space. Okay, now when you have that possibility, you need to find, you need what to write. You know, I told you the other time, what is the likelihood? The likelihood is the probability of observing your data. What is your data? Why one, why two, given the unknown parameter. That's what we call likelihood. So what I said that here, I'm, out, I'm now going to state the possible values of theta, what theta can be, okay? Now the theta is going to be zero, one, two, or three in that uh, situation because I got three balls, right? I got three balls, okay? Now, if you take a look at what you have inside the cell, it's just the probability. What is the probability? The, this worry one here now, when the theta equal to zero, okay? The probability of getting, not getting red in the first occasion and not getting red in the second occasion is going to be that. Then I'm going to consider all of that. You can see when theta equal to zero, I have all of that for this uh, possible scenarios. When theta equal to one, when theta equal to two, when theta equal to three. Okay. Now, because of that, I'm actually going to have, and don't forget, uh, if you take a look at what I have here now, Okay, I want to consider the likelihood of having red ball in the first occasion and red ball in the second occasion, given theta, L means likelihood. Okay, and if that is what I actually have, I'm actually going to have a, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the distribution. Okay, if you take a look at this, when theta equal to zero, one, okay, I'm going to check for one, one. Okay, that, that is the last one, right? I'm focusing on that, right? Uh, take, I'll give you one second. I gonna if you take a look at this guy now. I want to focus on this guy, right? Focusing on that guy, right? Okay, and focusing on that guy. Uh, and I'm actually consider, considering, you know, when theta equal to zero, one, and so on like that. Then what is the corresponding probability? That is what is displayed. Okay, so take a look at that. That is what is displayed. Now, and I now said a reasonable choice would be to choose the model with the highest likelihood, okay, for the observed data theta equal to three, okay? And that's exactly uh, what you are seeing now. Okay, now that is just like, you know, going uh, into, you know, looking at a particular scenario, but you know what, I wanna, I wanna walk you through uh, how the method of maximum likelihood work. I told you the other time, the, the method of maximum likelihood depends on the correctness of your model. I remember I told you the other time, you before using it, you need to first for specify your model, okay? Or your functional form, okay? That's, you, you, have, you gotta make sure you are specifying the correct functional form before you now going to use the method of maximum uh, likelihood, okay? And what we are actually seeking now, okay? What we're seeking now uh, is the values of the parameter that we maximize uh, the likelihood. And that is good. The, that estimator is going to be called the maximum likelihood estimator, okay? That's what, that is what it's going to be called. Okay, now, before going into example, please, I need your attention now. I need your attention now. Before going into example, I need your attention now. Now, let me tell you this. We are we want to be working. If I have a, a, a functional form, uh, f of y given theta, okay, getting the likelihood of y given theta is actually going to be a product, okay? Do you, do, do you understand that, right? Okay, if that's going to be a product, now I want to, and I want to tell you uh, what and what that is uh, needed when it comes to getting the maximum likelihood, 
Now I need you to pay attention now. Okay. We are not going to consider this guy, but we're going to consider the log, the log rhythm of that. We're going to consider the log rhythm of the likelihood function, okay, which is going to be, you know, I, I'm actually going to be talking about the natural log, okay, we're going to be using the logarithm of that. And I want to tell you the reason why do we need to use, instead of the likelihood itself, why do we need to use the log of the, of the likelihood? I want to tell you right now, I need you to pay attention. Number one reason is numerical stability. Numerical stability, reason why we use logarithm of the likelihood instead of the likelihood itself is because of numerical stability. What do I mean by numerical stability? Don't forget, this guy, they are probability distribution, okay? And when you, and, and they are expected to give a decimal or a fraction. And when you multiply fraction, what is going to happen? It's going to be so small, right? When it is small, Okay, optimizing that will not be stable. Okay, then when we take the log of the likelihood, when you take the log of that, of course, you know, uh, uh, that will prevent what I'm actually uh, going to call an ugly situation because that value is going to be so small. Situation where you have a complicated model or you have a very large data set, okay? Uh, the likelihood value will be very, very small and will not be stable. And that is one of the reasons why we make use of the log of the likelihood. Another reason why we make use of the log of the likelihood is, um, uh, let me just say, uh, computational, computational, computational efficiency. Okay, computational efficiency. Imagine working with products. Okay, and we want to optimize a product that is not going to be calculus friendly. <laughs> so, you know, taking the log of that is going to make it like an additive store, very easy, uh, you know, to work with. Then number three is what we call monotonicity. Monotonicity, monotonicity. You know, uh, log, 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 log functions, you know, uh, they, are, they, are, they, have, uh, they are increasing functions. Okay, and uh, that is the reason. And you know, if I want to use the idea of optimization, where I'm going to talk about differentiation, then I need functions that will be that will uh, that will be an increasing function. Okay, so a uh, log of the uh, you know log of a function is an increasing function, and that makes it to be fantastic. And number four, okay, is what we call statistical property. Statistical property. I'm talking about one of the reasons, okay, one of the reasons why we use the log of the or uh, the log rhythm of the likelihood instead of the likelihood itself. When I talk about statistical property, we're talking about uh you know in optimization, you're looking for critical points. Okay, the critical points like what? Like maxima, okay, minima, and the saddle point. Okay, they are going to occur at the same parameter value, whether you consider the likelihood function or you consider the log of the likelihood function. They are going to occur at the same parameter level. Why can't we save our time by just, since they're going to give the same result, why can't we just work with the log of the likelihood that will be tractable? Does that make sense? So I think I've, uh, you know, uh, given all of this now uh, as uh the reason now instead of what now which means uh based on all this reason optimizing uh likelihood function is the same as optimizing the log of the likelihood function now let's get to business now i want to go into example now don't forget uh since optimization is going to be involved we're going to borrow knowledge from mathematics and that and different station is going to be involved. Now let's take a look at example 9.14, a binomial experiment consisting of n trials in observations y1, y2 up to yn, where yi equal to one. If the i trial was selected, was a success, and yi equal to zero, the y is the MLE of P. Now here they're giving you the distribution. 
they want you to find the MLE of P, the maximum likelihood estimation for P. Now, what you're going to do, since you are working with the distribution, take a look at this guy here. You need to follow first right the likelihood of the distribution. I told you. That if that's to start with the likelihood of a distribution, what I'm trying to tell the world now, is the likelihood is going to be this guy. Okay, if you, if you take a look at what I'm doing here, this is like for the Bernoulli. Okay, Bernoulli. Okay, now after having this guy, okay, what you what what you are saying now, okay, uh, this guy now, okay, will be very difficult to opt optimize, and you know, and that is why we're going to introduce a log, and introducing a log because it's a monoto uh, monotonically increasing function that would be super cool. Okay, now and I want, I, I'm introducing a log here, a log here, a natural log. Introducing a natural log is going to make things easy. I'll be able to write it this way. Any question? Or oh, now it is written now. Okay, you know we want a word, even though we actually, uh, you know, things are complicated. Is there a way we can simplify, like you know, our approach? Okay, now we got this guy now. Now, getting here now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to differentiate with the respect to the parameter. You know, differentiating with the respect to the parameter, this is now looking like a score function. Do you remember a score function that we do the other time? Okay, the score function that we did the other time. The score function is d d theta. Okay, lean f of y given theta. The only difference here is that instead of force, you know, this, this score function is for one observation. Okay, if I want to have a score function for n, for sample size n, I'm actually going to have d, d theta lean. This, that, that's going to be product here. Okay, where this guy here is the likelihood. Okay, we have a, we have a score function for one sample size, I've got a score function for n sample size. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, uh, uh, I'm actually going to differentiate this guy with respect to p. Now, and after differentiating, you know, in optimization, after the differentiation, what are you going to do? You're going to equate to zero, right? When you equate to zero, then you solve for p. You solve for that parameter of interest. That's exactly what we're doing now. Take a look at this guy now. Okay, number one, we said the derivative of that will actually be set to zero. We're going to solve for P. Okay, after solving for P, then we're going to call it P cap MLE, whatever we got. Okay, but before we proceed, we can also try if this exists, you know, the second derivative. And let me tell you this, the second derivative, because we, uh, we're talking about maximum, the second derivative should be less than zero. Does that make sense? And that was the reason I remember the other time under um, Fisher information that I told you that the Fisher information can be negative. Where do you think the negative come from? If there's a negative, then, the, then you are talking about the second derivative. Okay? You're talking about the second derivative the moment you have a negative. But the one without negative is when you talk about only first derivative, uh, sorry, because I'm using y today, so let me let me be consistent. Okay, y given theta, that one is going to be first derivative squared. Okay, so in the maximization technique, okay, the second derivative should be less than zero. When the second derivative is less than zero, then it means whatever parameter of interest you arrive at, we maximize. Now, uh, that is what we're doing here now. We set to zero after differentiating with the respect to P. Then we solve for P. And after solving for P, uh, this is what we got. Okay, after after solving for P, we got P cap, MLE. You're going to write P cap, MLE, when you are done, to be Y over N. What is it telling us? Oh, what is it telling us? Okay, it's trying to tell us if I'm working with the Bernoulli or binomial, and I want to figure out the sample uh, proportion. And the sample proportion I told you is the same thing as a Y bar. This is a Y bar. Y here is a summation. Why, if you go back, it's summation. If you, if you come back here, uh, you can see that. Uh, give me one second. You can see that this guy. 
is we are letting it y to represent summation y i. So that confirmed that. Okay. So take a look at that. And of course, uh, verifying when you you know you're gonna do second derivative to verify whether what you have will maximize. And second derivative has to be negative. Can see negative. That's to be negative. Okay. Take a look at that. Okay. Finally, we got our MLE. That's all. That's how we do it. Okay. Now, and if you want to take a look at what I have right now, okay, take a look at that. It's looking as if we plotted the likelihood against so many parameter value, and we are seeking for parameter value at the peak. Look at that. That peakiness, that, that, that corresponds to the maximum likelihood. So we want to identify the parameter the value of a parameter that will correspond to that 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 value that that is what this guy is actually giving us here. Okay, for that distribution, is there any question? Okay, now I want to move now to another distribution, but this time around to normal distribution. And you know what we want to do? We want to estimate two parameters at a time. That's going to be super cool. That's going to be, that's going to be super easy. Now, like I said, you need to follow first get likelihood of the distribution. That is very, very important. And after that, you take the log of the likelihood. I told you the reason why we prefer to work with the log of the likelihood compared to the likelihood itself. We're going to get the same result, but we're going to save our time, uh, you know, uh, from rigorous computational uh, task. Now, we were, we're seeking to get the MLE of mu and sigma at the same time. We're actually going to do it uh, one at a time. Okay, we're going to uh, optimize one at a time. Take a look at it. what am I doing here. I'm actually differentiating the, the uh, you know, I'm differentiating the likelihood function. Of course, if I want to differentiate with respect to mu, this guy is going to be a constant, right? That's why I'm only focusing on that, right? And that is going to give you that then you equate to zero. Then I'm going to differentiate again with the respect to tau is the sigma squared. I got that. I get two equations. Okay. Set that to zero. Set this guy to zero. Then solve them separately. Okay. Now, by the time you solve them separately, um, the first one for the first equation is going to give you that. It's going to tell you the estimate, the maximum likelihood estimate for mu is going to be y bar. Of course, we've proved that before, something like that before in this class. And it's also going to tell you that of the variance. So at the end of the day, this is what we got for each of them. For the for, for mu, uh, that's what we got. Y bar for sigma uh, uh, squared, that is what we got. Okay, the world of in a situation after getting this, and another question asks about you getting the MLE of sigma. Okay, you know, you get the MLE of sigma squared. And they want to get the MLE of sigma. All we just need to do find the square root, the square root of the variance. We give you the, we give we give you the standard deviation that they talk about. Is there any question on this? So if I were you, I would visit different probability distribution, get the likelihood, and see how you can apply the method of maximum likelihood. Now another thing that I want to talk about now is. What of in a situation, you know, I want to talk about invariance property of MLE. Okay, if theta cap is an MLE of theta, then we want to talk about a function of estimator. Okay, it's also going to be an MLE of a function of, of, a, of a parameter. Okay, in, in, that, in that point, we're going to have, a, uh, you know, uh, estimator for that function equal to that. Now, uh, I'm going to walk you through that now. You're going to see what I'm talking about. We want to talk about some large sample properties of maximum likelihood. And you know what we want to do? We got a function of estimator and a parameter. And that's going to follow a, uh, a uh, you know, uh, Z distribution. So under certain regularity condition, okay, we got a function of estimator. Okay, is T of theta cap. This is a function of theta. And we're trying to say the function of estimator, okay, is a consistent estimator for a function of theta. And for large samples, of course, you know, for large samples, our Z is just going to be 
the in the numerator, the difference between what? The difference between the estimator and its mean. Okay. Divided by what do you see? Uh, I need somebody to pay attention. Uh, I'm going to, to this guy. Uh, take a look at this guy. What is that? What is that guy called? Based on what you've done before. Can somebody tell me? What is that guy? You saw? Yeah, this, uh, it, it's called some a name. It's called a name. Fisher information. That is Fisher information. You know, when you see something divided by, when Fisher information is a denominator, the whole thing is going to have like a variance. Does that mean sense? That's all it means. You see, here yeah, is acting as a denominator, right? So this guy. Okay, this guy here is just telling me, I should, you know, I, I'm talking about this guy now. He's trying to tell me, you know what? That function of theta differentiated, then square whatever you get. Then when, when you square whatever you get, then you divide by that. Okay, what I'm trying to say now, if this is an estimator, and this guy is the mean of the estimator, the whole thing inside the square root is the variance. That's all it means. Okay, now, if I now want to test, if I want to test hypothesis or I want to construct a confidence interval about the estimator, okay, it's actually going to be, look, it's going to be this. Take a look at that. Okay, can you see can you see this guy? Like, I want to construct an estimator. You know, it's going, uh, the confidence interval, the last sample confidence interval for a function of the estimator is going to be the estimator plus or minus z alpha over 2 square root of the variance, right? Take a look at that. Okay, we're going to have that. Okay, that's super cool. Can we have an example? Okay, we're going to have an example now. Take a look at this guy. Uh, for random variable with a Bernoulli distribution, you're given that functional form for y equal to 0, 1. Okay, y equal to 0, 1. That, that's a Bernoulli, right? Okay, uh, if y1, y2 of the yn denote a random sample of size n from this distribution, derive 100%, 1 minus alpha, the confidence interval for p to 1 minus p. How is it different? The one we normally do before is for p. But right now, we want to do it for a function of p. A function of parameter is p into 1 minus p. Does that make sense? We're actually going to make use of stuff like this. You know, we're going to make use of, we're going to make use of this guy. We're going to make use of what you see here for confidence interval. If the focus is not on just estimator, but a function of estimator. Okay, now, uh, if you want to do that now, the very first thing we're going to do, okay, is uh, what is the uh, MLE? Okay, you four of us derive the MLE using using Bernoulli distribution the way we normally do. What was the MLE? You know, we got the other time the, the, something over n, right? Now, if that is the MLE, and we had that W is summation y. Okay, we got it. We four of us apply that, and after I apply that, then we can impose whatever we get on. You know, uh, 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 what we want to find out now. We want to construct the confidence interval for the true value of this guy. What, what would be an estimator for that? It's going to be this guy, right? It's going to have a car, right? Now, what is the next thing to do? The t, well, now, don't forget, in the, inside the formula, inside the, um, let me clean this one up, inside the formula here, what did they ask you to do? Inside the variance formula, this is going to be super, we already know this guy now, it's going to be pick up into one minus pick up, but this guy, what are we going to do? Go to the T of theta, differentiate with respect to theta, whatever you got, you square that, okay? And don't forget that one too. But the one inside here, we, 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 uh, we're using the Bernoulli formula, F of Y theta. But the one inside here is the function of the parameter. And that's exactly what we're doing uh, what we're doing now, oh my God, take a look at this. Is that not what we're doing now? T of P, and what is T of P? They gave us P into one minus P. Then we multiply, we go that, then we differentiate with respect to P. That gives us one minus two P. And if that gives us one minus two P, we're coming back. Okay, what, what we're just going to do in the formula to square it, one minus two P. But uh, before moving forward, we need to follow first, like we want to get this guy now.
okay? We want to go to the Bainoli formula, you know, do what we normally do, okay? Lean of that, do first derivative or second derivative, okay? With the minus, if you don't want to go for second derivative, don't forget there's another uh, formula that you can just do first derivative and square all of that. But in this example, I'm only doing the second derivative, which is this guy here, take a look at it. No likelihood. You can see in the formula, do we have in the formula uh, here, give me one second here, here in this formula, is there any